Good morning. It's great to have you sharing with us online for our worship this morning. We hope that you've had a great week, a week where you've seen God's love um, being shown to you in many different ways. This morning we're going to start our worship by singing a great song, The Splendour of the King. How great is our God. Let's join together in worship. is our God. We've just sung the words and today we want to just recognise how great our God is. Psalm 40 verses 3 to 5 says these words. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Oh the joys of those who trust the Lord, who have no, no confidence in the proud, or in those who worship idols. O Lord my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. How great is our God. And our God is so great that he has given us his son. Out of love for us, how deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond 
all measure. We've just read, you have no equal. Let's sing together. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to the Jones household this week for our prayer time. We thought we'd like to share with you some of our thoughts and experiences dealing with COVID-19 and lockdown and then pray about them. I thought back to just before lockdown and how lucky we were to go to Croydon with the Songsters earlier in the year and take part in the ISS celebrations at the Fairfields Hall. At the event was an SPNS trade store and being extremely organised for once I bought myself this new army coat ready for Christmas cowling. I anticipated two things, firstly that when December came I would be nice and warm standing in Liverpool city centre and secondly more of a hope that it would fit me. Five and a half months later I'm not sure whether I'll be cowling or not, however I am certain it still fits. Just. With the recent events of COVID-19, many of the plans and expectations we have all had have just been thrown completely out the window. Simon recently showed me a post on Facebook which depicts the devil sitting at a table talking to God and the devil boasts about closing down all the churches and God replies by saying, yes you have, but I've opened up a new church in every home. We are sad because we've not been able to worship uh, together but as a call we've been given the opportunity to be more creative in how we worship Using technology, we've been able to continue worshipping together, but also to be able to reach out to people all over the world. Although we've not been able to have our music practices, 
Through the use of technology, we've been able to continue to meet virtually and have had opportunity to listen to guest speakers, to share our thought favourite pieces and to socialise. We've also had the opportunity to perform in virtual groups of singers and players. However, we have to also remember that there are some members of our congregation who have not had access to technology and they felt really isolated during this time. This dining room table has been my work area for the last number of months. I don't know if you know what I do for a living, but I work for HMRC. The department I work in administers schemes such as the Job Retention Scheme, which you may know better as the Furlough Scheme, the Self-Employed Income Support Scheme, and my personal favourite, the Eat Out to Help Out Scheme. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, HMRC have been using a strap line which says, NHS Save Lives, HMRC Save Livelihoods. Many of us have been impacted financially by COVID. We have in this household and Jenny reminded me just how much the effect can vary. Jenny's been furloughed now for nearly six months and did comment that an 80% salary for a six month holiday was not a bad deal. But she also has colleagues for whom a 20% reduction in their salary has been absolutely devastating and they struggle to survive. We've seen an increase in demand for food banks and I've been privileged to spend some time supporting our food bank. Others who have been furloughed have developed new and exciting skills which we've benefited from as a church community. But not everyone has been so fortunate and many have been left feeling isolated, depressed and lonely. And as we start to come out of lockdown, we enter a recession and for those for whom the effects of Covid have left them physically, mentally and financially disadvantaged, things may get worse. That giant immeasurable world out there for many people has once again shrunk to just four walls. One of the benefits to come out of the Covid pandemic has been the sense of community. Like us, many of you may only have spoken to your neighbours in passing, but during the crisis we have got to know our neighbours better. We've all been out on the doorsteps clapping in support of the NHS and have developed a real sense of community spirit along with our neighbours. Some holding impromptu concerts for everyone in the street. You may have had a similar experience. Also during the VE Day celebrations, we sat for the first time on our front path, chatting to all our neighbours, something we've not done in the 30 odd years that we've lived in this street. And it was lovely to share Heather and Kevin's prayer time last Sunday. People have lost holidays this year. Weddings, christenings, anniversary celebrations, family get-togethers, all cancelled. But with a relaxation of lockdown provisions, things are starting to get better, although it may feel only temporary. But the photos and videos Heather and Kevin shared with us showed people on holiday, people sharing together, and we even had a wedding to celebrate. People have been able to reconnect with their families give hugs to their grandchildren and despite all the technology that has allowed to sh us to share virtually there are still so many people who are alone. We are still living in a time of uncertainty and fear. It can be so easy to give in to worry, fear and despair but with him we can find strength and look forward to wonderful things. He gives us hope. In Isaiah it says, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. Where do we find our strength? in the Lord our God. In Psalm 46 verses 1 to 3 we read, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, 
and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Let us pray. Dear Lord, these last few months have been very unsettling for people with plans and expectations changed. In these unsettling times, we take this opportunity to be still and to rest in your presence. For many, lockdown has been devastating with jobs and livelihoods threatened. We pray that you will be near to all those who are worried. Whatever the future holds, we would place ourselves into your hands and seek your guidance and protection. Help us to put our trust in you. For those who are feeling isolated and lonely, we pray that your love will surround and comfort them. We give thanks for the people of our core who have given their time and talents and also for the use of technology which has enabled us to continue to worship together and to stay connected to each other during this difficult time. We give thanks for the new opportunities that have come our way enabling us to reach out to so many people beyond our local core community and to share in worship with them. We pray that you will continue to use us to bring people into a knowledge of you and of your love for them. In these uncertain times, we would ask for your blessing on our lives and the reassurance of God's unchanging love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Simon and Jenny, for leading us in our prayers this morning. As we continue in worship, we're going to share together in testimony. First, by listening to the songsters as they sing, Would You Know Why I Love Jesus? Using the tune of Healing Christ. And as we listen to the songsters, we might think for ourselves, again, those reasons as to why we love Jesus and why we follow him. And then after the songsters of Psalm, Pan is going to share with us what is God saying to her in these days.
What is God saying to me now? I'm a talker. I have lots of opinions and often like to wear them. I was called a chatterbox as a child and I don't suppose that's changed much. I actually talk to God quite often, really any time of the day. But when I think about it, most times probably quite superficial. The word, I, the word list comes into mind. And as we know, lists can just get longer and longer and longer. But I also say thank you. That's important. But even that can be quite flippant. It must sound like babble to God, as a baby babbles when learning to talk. No, I know I have to be more constructive, more thoughtful in my talking to God. As we are told in Matthew, what I must do is find a quiet place to be myself, no airs or graces, to meet with my Heavenly Father properly. Then comes listening. I think I often confuse hearing and listening. I read in a quote, hearing is through the ears, listening is through the mind. Yeah, I definitely get those mixed up. To really listen to someone, to take in what they're saying, can be an effort. Many times I'm sure I will give a, an answer to a question without actually hearing, listening to what is being said. So then I have to ask people to repeat themselves. What you said? Oh, right. Hearing just happens. It's something that the body does without us thinking about it. But listening, that's a choice. To use my mind to understand what has been said. And like talking, I have to listen intentionally. Prayer we are taught is a conversation with God, a two-way thing, a dialogue. Sometimes when I talk and don't listen, it then becomes a monologue. It's between me and myself. When I talk with God, I expect him to listen to me. So therefore, shouldn't I listen to him for what he has to say to me? If I don't listen, I can't complain if I don't seem to get an answer. But I know it's not enough to talk to God and to listen to him. I must also carry out the instructions which he gives me. That will keep me on the right path. So what do I need to do? I need to talk to God daily. I need to listen to God daily and I need to obey him daily. A chorus comes to my mind. Renew my will from day to day. Blend it with thine and take away all that now makes it hard to say. Thy will be done. Thank you, Pam, for sharing and Solsters as well. As we sing again, O God of burning, cleanse in flame, send the fire. And that, that final verse, our testimony, our commitment in response to God's great love for us. O oh, see us on your altar lay. We give our lives to you today. And so we're going to sing together. A God of burning, cleansing flame. And then Heather will come and share the announcements for this week.
if you're joining us for the first time, where have you been? Seriously, we're glad that you're here and that we can share in worship with you like this. If you're with us live on Sundays at 10.30 UK time and you have logged into YouTube, you might have found the chat option. Now, if you have, you'll be able to say hello to everybody else who's watching live right now. The chat feature will disappear once the live event is finished, but you can still give us a thumbs up or you can comment. Now, if none of that makes any sense to you, don't worry about it at all. You can always contact us through any of these social media sites. And we really do value the encouraging messages that we've had from you, especially the messages telling us how these online meetings have had an impact. There are core folk who pray faithfully for you. And whether we know your names or not, our prayer is that God will continue to have an impact on you as we worship together. And as we sang in the last song, that the fire and energy of the spirit will live in each one of us. So thank you to all the Walton folk for making this possible by letting us into your homes every week as you contribute to worship. Now, talking of homes, where is Steph? Ah, there she is. Let's see what she's got for us next. Over to you, Steph. Good morning. Now, I know over the last few months, lots of you have missed seeing Peekaboo at the army. And so I thought I'd use him to help me this morning with the kids spot. How do you think I take care of Peekaboo? I make sure he has food and water and a safe place to stay. I give him lots of baths and let him walk around and play. Peekaboo knows my voice. If I call him, he knows it's me and will come because he recognises me and wants food. Peekaboo knows that I care about him and will take care of him. In a tiny way, this is a little bit like being a shepherd. Do you know what a shepherd does? A shepherd is responsible for taking care of sheep. There are some people who are shepherds now, but in the times of the Bible, there were even more of them. The shepherd would guide the sheep to places where they could find grass to eat, water to drink, and a place to rest. Just like Peekaboo, sheep are not always terribly smart, but they learn to follow the shepherd. They know when he's talking to them and follow along, recognising that he will lead them to good things. If a wolf or a bear tries to come to attack the flock, the shepherd must protect his sheep. We can learn more about this in John 10 verses 1 to 10. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. In our Bible reading today, Jesus compared himself to a shepherd. He said that he was the gateway. He is the way to life and anyone that might try to stake such a claim is tricking us. We are like sheep wandering around and needing guidance. 
we can trust in Jesus to provide for us and protect us. He said that a good shepherd would even lay down his life for the sheep, and that's exactly what Jesus did. We can trust in his promises and rejoice that our shepherd has rescued us from sin and death. We can listen for his voice through prayer, scripture and discernment, and we know that he cares. Each of us is precious in God's eyes and we can rest assured that he listens when we call to him and gives us life. What a blessing. We should thank God for that. Thank you, Steph. It's always great to listen to what you have to say to us. And as we continue, the YP band are going to play one of their virtual recordings. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, you are my shield, my protector. Just reminding us that when we rest in God, then we are covered, we are protected, we are loved. His grace is sufficient for us, each one, every day. And following on from that, Mary has written another poem um, and she's reading that to us this morning, accepting and renewing. And so um, we'll listen to the Wiper Band and then Mary, and then again we're going to sing, um, Worthy, you are worthy of our praise. So let's listen and then let's sing together. <laughs> This is a poem which I've written myself and it's called Accepting and Renewing. Do you remember when you accepted the Lord? Your heart felt huge and was pounding. You said you'd follow his way and your faith on his love you'd be founding. So eager to learn, so eager to come to church and thank God every week. But what of today as you travel your way? Do you still for God's word wish to see? Have you grown? Have you learned? Have you walked in his way? Do you now still talk to him daily? Or by chance have you stopped? Has your faith become cold? And your once clear sight become hazy? Do you still have your focus on God every day? Is he part of your daily life? Do you stand in your own strength going along with the world, calling out when only in strife? Have you turned your attention away from your Lord to more worldly values and measure? Do you seek your contentment as others may do in possessions and worthless bright treasures? Have you turned your back, misguided by chance, or perhaps you've just lost your way? Take time to reflect on your life. Yes, right now, 
and then you may kneel down and pray. Remember those heartbeats, the fulfilment, the pleasure, the excitement, the wonder, the love. That's the treasure. Renew your promise. Return to his fold. Don't leave it too late. Don't be lonely and cold. Thank you. I choose to fix my eyes on you. There is nothing I would rather do than worship, worship. As I think about what you have done, how you sent your one and only son, I'm grateful, grateful. I will praise you. for this morning is taken from Ezekiel chapter 34 and verses 11 to 16. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search and find my sheep. I will be like a shepherd looking for his scattered flock. I will find my sheep and rescue them from all the places where they have scattered on that dark and cloudy day. I will bring them back home to their own land of Israel from among the peoples and nations. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel and by the rivers and in all the places where people live. Yes, I will give them good pasture land on the high hills of Israel. There they will lie down in pleasant places and feed in the lush pastures of the hills. I myself will tend my sheep and give them a place to lie down in peace, says the Sovereign Lord. 
I will search for my lost ones who strayed away, and I will bring them safely home again. I will bandage the injured and strengthen the weak, but I will destroy those who are fat and powerful. I will feed them, yes, feed them justice. Amen. Great words of the prophecy of Ezekiel about the Good Shepherd. Mary is going to bring a beautiful solo to us just now, Shepherd of my heart, maker of this heart of mine. You know me very well. Let's listen. Thank you.
thank you, Mary, for that beautiful song. I hope you've been blessed by the singing and the words that Mary's just sung. I know I certainly have, as I've listened to it several times over the past week or so. But in that song, Mary sang these words, maker of this heart of mine, keeper of this heart of mine. You're the beacon of the nights, giver of this life in me. This is what God is to each one of us. He doesn't pick and choose. He is that to each one of us. So that when the song goes on to say, so when I face the darkness, so if I start to wander, so let the cold winds blow, so as I walk through valleys, we can still sing, I'll trust in you, shepherd of my heart, because we know all that God is for us. We can still sing, I'll trust in you, shepherd of my heart. So what does it mean for God to be the shepherd of my heart? A shepherd is someone who would tend the sheep, who would herd them, who would feed them, who would guard them. He would keep the flock intact. He would protect from predators and he would guide them to mark areas for shearing. He would guide them. This is what a shepherd would do for his sheep. Isn't that amazing that he would give of himself to do all that for his sheep? We read in Matthew chapter 10 verses 29 and 31 these words. You can buy two sparrows for only a copper coin, yet not even one sparrow falls from its nest without the knowledge of your father. Aren't you worth much more to God than many sparrows? A couple of weeks ago, we spoke about being God's prized possession. So if a shepherd would look after his sheep in the way that we outlined just two seconds ago, in that way, how would and is God looking after us? From our reading earlier, from Ezekiel in verses 14 and 15 we read, Yes, I will give them good pasture land on the hills, high hills of Israel. There they will lie down in pleasant places and feed in the lush pastures of the hill. I myself will tend my sheep and give them a place to lie down in peace, says the Sovereign Lord. I will. In fact, this whole passage, God says, I will search them and seek them out. I will deliver them. I will bring them out. I will gather them together. I will bring them in. I will feed them. I will cause them to lie down. I will bind up the broken and I will strengthen the sick. I will, not I might do this for you if you do this. He says, I will do this. I will search, I will deliver, I will bring them out. So through the prophecy of Ezekiel, we can see how much God will look after us. We have a clear picture as well of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And this illustrates to us as clearly as anything possibly can do, I believe, love the loving qualities of God. What a prophecy also of Jesus, our Good Shepherd. The whole passage says about the security and prosperity of God's flock during the reign of Christ, during the time of Christ and Christ living within us. And we are living in that time. Verse 26, if we'd read on in our reading, it says, I will bless my people and their homes around my holy hill. And in the proper season, I will send showers. I will send the showers they need. There will be showers of blessing. There will be showers of blessing. Yes, as the song says, there will be times of distress and darkness but God will shower us with his blessings. He will guard us, he will protect us. 
So we know what it means for God to be the shepherd of our heart. We know what this entails for us, what this can mean for each one of us. So for all that he does for us and is for us, surely that means that we can put our trust in him. We can trust in a God who wants to, can and will do so much for us. Psalm 62 and verses 1 to 8 say, I wait quietly before God, for my victory comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will never be shaken. So many enemies against one man, all of them trying to kill me. To them I'm just a broken down wall or a tottering fence. They plan to topple me from my high position. They delight in telling lies about me. They praise me to my face, but curse me in their hands. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. My victory and honour come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. O oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. What tremendous words they are. And this psalm was believed to be inspired by Absalom's rebellion. While they were pretending loyalty to the king, to King David, they were plotting against him behind the scenes. So David wrote this psalm. David's enemies were trusting in men and money, but actually David was trusting in the Lord. And why not? He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. My victory and honour come from him. That's the God that David recognised. That's the God that David was serving. And so he was able to trust in the Lord, recognising God as the only true refuge. And he is the one and only. Didn't we say that earlier in our meeting? He alone is God. And it's the same for us as it was for David. He is the one and only God, our rock, our defender, our expectation, our glory, our refuge, our source of power, our fountain of mercy. That's our God. God alone is our God. His son Jesus is our good shepherd. We need to put our trust in him. And when we do this, we will discover that he is the beacon of our nights and the sunlight of our day. He is the light. Whatever we're facing, whatever we're going through, as that song says, when we face the darkness, when we start to wander, when we let the cold winds blow, and when we walk through the valleys, he is our light because he is the one and only true God. He is all that we need. So this morning, I urge you, we urge you, to consider all that God is as the shepherd of our heart, of my heart, of your heart. Recognise that even though things will not always go as planned, we can put our trust in him because he is our refuge and our strength and he will seek us out he will bring us together he will feed us and he will bind up the broken let's put our trust in a great god we sang right at the start of our meeting how great is our god and he is a great god let's recognize that here this morning and for each one of us, put our trust in him. We're 
going to sing a chorus through together now and Glyn is going to play the music for us and it quite simply says in thee O Lord do I put my trust and then be still and know that I am God you see we're singing in thee O Lord I put my trust but then be still before him and recognize him as our great God and then again we'll sing in thee O Lord do I put my trust you're at home you're watching this but just come before God now and respond as he wants you to respond let's pray together loving Heavenly Father we just thank you here this morning because you are such a great God we thank you and want to praise your name because you are our refuge you are our strength you are our victory and Lord because of that we can put our trust in you even though at times we go through dark periods Lord you are the light that we need help us to live in that light help us to show that light to everyone that we meet and Lord, help us to recognise you at work within our hearts and within our lives. And let's, Lord, just praise your name because you are the shepherd of our hearts. Lord, we thank you and want to praise your name because of all that you mean to us. Amen. And in closing of our worship just now, we're going to sing a great song, Joyful, Joyful. We adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love, our only true God. Let's sing praises to him. Then this last verse, mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Father love is reigning o'er us. Brother love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music lifts us sunward in the triumph song of life. Let's sing those words and let's mean those words as we sing them together and then the sing company will bring our benediction to us. God bless you all. Surround the earth and hand reflect the rays. Stars.
Angels and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, blossoming meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving. 